Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the B-Grades, episode 52. Who would have believed it? We are at the wonderful Vermark Custom Cycling Clothing Store here in Rockaby Road, which is owned by Tony Anderson and Bruce Davis. Welcome, Tony. Thank you. Very and much. also, welcome John Lisso to the show. The reason John Lisso is here is because he is the series champion, congratulations, yeah, well of the West Coast Masters Cycling Club Rider of the Series. All the criteriums put together, there's a point system. John, you ended up with the most points over A grade, B grade, C grade, D grade. How does it feel? Oh, fabulous. I uh, got to put my hands on a trophy, never done that before. So yeah, it was good, I loved it. Mate, you're new to cycling. How, how, how long have you been riding a bike, but how long have you been racing and what got you into it? Um, I've always been a little bit competitive, I suppose. I used to race carts and motorbikes and then that got a little dangerous and expensive. Um, when I cracked over 40, I think uh, I wanted to be a little bit more mindful of my health. So yep. yeah, um, used to go riding with my older brother. He sort of got me into it. Um, and then I looked at some clubs to sort of do some group riding with and my competitive nature came out. So I started sprinting in the group rides, which isn't probably cool, but uh, <laughs> so I found another club that I could do that with, and, and that's West, West Coast Masters, yeah. And it's a great setup down there, let's face it. It's, it's, it's the best racing, as far as I'm concerned, that we have in Western Australia. Just old school racing, pay your noms, rock up race, go home happy. Yeah, it's fabulous. Yeah. Well, well done, mate. Absolutely fantastic. Now, we're here at the Vermark store because Tony Anderson owns it, of course, and he's going to tell us more about that shortly. But the other reason we're here is hashtag Chihuahua Pack <laughs> took out the team prize this year, the Arbitrage Masters cycling team, who have been known as the best looking, best dressed, because the photo of Matt Upton you're now looking at will show they're not necessarily <laughs> the best looking, but they are the best dressed team in the state. They took out the trophy, so no longer the posers who can't race, yeah, no right. longer the ones who don't turn up in the rain but the road season's on its way. You guys are the series champions. How good does yeah. that feel? No, look, it's fantastic. And all the guys throughout the whole season uh, were really consistent, um, rode beautifully as a team, you know, whenever we were there in, in numbers. And yeah, look, it was a bit of a seesawing event throughout the, uh, the season. We uh, sort of grappled with uh, Gary Suckling's team yep. uh, week in, week out. Um, and yeah, it really came down to the wire. I think it was eight points at the end of the end of the, the series, so it was it was close. But uh, yeah, we had a great great time. And as you said, you know, West Coast Masters yet again put on a fantastic um, summer series. And you know, we're now looking forward to you know the road season, and you know maybe we can do it again. Twentieth of May, the first road race takes place on Chidlow B. You say consistency, but there was quite a number of wins there. Luke Pledger was having wins, Wade Keyes was having wins, and at the weekend we had the Colin Rossiter Memorial, which is, as far as I'm concerned, the biggest race of the summer. And Ian Gregory, bully, took out a very yeah. nice win. Yeah, it looks right. It was, uh, we went into, we all decided to race A grade on Sunday so we could um, really support Ian in that, uh, that endeavour. That was his, you know, his, uh, his prize for... For the year, he really wanted to try and pull that that race off. So uh, we thought we'll we'll all join in A grade, um, and yeah, the team again rode brilliantly. We had you know three guys in the in the break, and the rest of us were just controlling things back in the in the pillow. It was it, everything went to plan. It was just perfect. So, and I was glad to see him win by you know a, you know a decent margin too. It was a nice clear win so it was great yeah, yeah it, was really good. it was very windy there on sunday john you can attest to that riding in the b grade race it was a very windy day a grade got uh, absolutely blown apart with mm. three and four groups around the course but it was a superb ride other mentions there uh, a few mates of the show ian dow he won uh, c grade i think it was uh, and mick russell took out d grade who's an old racing partner of uh, colin rossiter and Mick Russell, well done. He did an absolutely beautiful speech about Colin Rossiter and pointed out that Colin was a very good bike rider, represented West Australia. He was a state champion in West Australia, also a national champion in the Masters ranks. Uh, but he was always a guy for a smile, a kind word of a fellow cyclist and always willing to help the younger riders. I know he helped me over the years as I was growing up and a number of other guys who did very well in WA cycling. John, absolute pleasure. Well done on what you've done this summer. I'd like to see you try and do the double, mate, because it's a, consi it's, it's a consistency thing. You like turning up every week. Yeah, I, I, I can't not race. I mean, I have to be there every weekend. That's the whole lot of my week. Um, I will try. I'll be there, definitely. I hope to actually get a win in the, in the series this time instead of actually just getting seconds and getting the points. But... <laughs> Um, it yeah. works. There's a lot, a lot of blokes who won the Tour de France and never won a stage race, so don't worry about yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll definitely be out there. Yeah. Now, Tony, tell us about Vermark. You know, 
in this current climate and things, what makes what made you want to do this in the first place? What makes Vermont different to everything else? Oh, look, we, as you probably know, and many people know in Perth, you know, uh, Vermark and Arbitrage have been associated with each other for more, a decade or more. I think 2005 was the first time uh, one of my teams pulled on some Vermark clothing, and uh, we've been, you know, great supporters of the brand ever since. Uh, it's fantastic clothing. And when the opportunity came to get involved in it from a distribution point of view, um, we really thought it was an opportunity too good to miss. One of the, uh, the keys to our plan with, with my partner Bruce Davies is that we can offer a, a localised design service. So designs aren't done overseas, so everything is done locally, uh, which you know, can cut down the delivery times um, for people by a couple of weeks in, in, in most instances. But you know the the market. You mentioned the market there. Look, there is a lot of people in the market at the moment doing customised cycling clothing, and you know the the quality can vary. You know from one extreme to the other. We think the the mark edge is that it's you know it comes off the back of R and D that's associated with teams like Quickstep and a lot of Sedal and Top Sport. So there's a product that people can buy from us as a custom design kit or even as some of our off the peg. Uh, range, the, the uh, Vermark collection, is the same clothing as the pros are wearing in Europe. So um, there's no difference in the quality or, or any, any of that. It's, so it's, it's clothing which is, you know, really going to stand the test of time and give people, you know, lot, you know probably two, three years if, if, they, if they treat it properly uh, out of a kit. So yeah, it's, it's just a quality product and we, you know, uh, didn't want to miss the opportunity to be the representative for it here in Australia and New Zealand. Fantastic. And uh, the first time I came across Tony Anderson was we all rocked up to a Pickering Brook race many, many years ago. <laughs> and there was this bloke standing there in what looked like the complete quick step kit. And you, as a racing cyclist, and we were a bit younger at the time, a bit ruder, uh, we thought, oh, he's this joke. I was trying to pretend he's Tom Boonan. But then we looked closely and saw that it was a Vermark kit with arbitrage written all over. And suddenly he went from some joker to, hang on, who's this bloke? Who's this bloke? <laughs> and I must attest, Tony and I have worked together quite often uh, with the arbitrage cycling team over the years, and he's poured um, tens of thousands of dollars into uh, younger riders and the arbitrage racing team over the years. So I thank you for that, mate. And uh, well done. I hope it goes well. And thank I hope you. Vermark works out. Yeah, thank you very much. No, John, we're... thanks for joining us. I wish you all the best for the road season. Say good day to Vesna for me. John's wife and I used to work at the casino together years and years ago, so it really, it's a special moment for me to have John here because I know when he started, right, started cycling, so to have him winning now, something I'm never going to be able to win, that's for sure, the series trophy, you have to turn up and race. <laughs> so well done, mate. Well done, Tony. Thank you. And uh, I wish the team and the individuals, Thank you. maybe you can get into a team now, uh, all the best for the rest of the season. <laughs> We're going to come back with a bit of a wrap-up of what's to come and what's happened recently. Well, folks, we've got a big weekend of racing coming up here in Western Australia. There are so many events on. I've got Stuart Carson with me. Welcome to the show, mate. How are you? Now, Stuart, for those of you who like to get muddy and dirty, will know that this is the man who runs Cyclocross in Western Australia. And this weekend, we've got Supercross 2018 happening at the Claremont Showgrounds. What have we got to look forward to Saturday night? Cyclocross under lights. There's probably only less than half a dozen cyclocross races that occur at under lights, and we happen to have it here in WA. Yep. It's pretty cool. Um, at the showgrounds, uh, we've got about 120 entries thus far, which is tracking along nicely. I'd like to see about 140 down there, not including the kids. Um, we're, this year, we've brought the kids' race back to um, a 10 to 6 start. Mm -hmm. So the, the girls and boys under 13, even under 14s, will be racing their, their bikes on a slightly um, shortened and abridged cross course. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. and. Uh, there's some cracking people that are you going to be You do have a couple. Now. There's a couple of big races on this weekend. We know that already. But you've got a couple of superstars lining up in the men's elite and the women's elite. Yeah, excluding me, of course. Excluding yourself. <laughs> <laughs> We've got um, Guy Kalmer. He's a, a legend on the road. Which you've, um... Never call Guy Kalmer a legend. In any... Guy Kalmer's not a legend. Don't let that go to Guy Kalmer's head. Guy Kalmer is lining up. He's, li he's racing. <laughs> He'll be on the front row. He won the first race we had two weeks ago at uh, yeah. Garvey Park. And then Graham Brown, he's back again. Now see, that's where you put the legend in. Oh, legend. Now you've got a legend. Okay. okay. 
So Graham Brown, the legend, of course, because he has won Supercross back in 2016, the first time. Very nicely, yeah. He's just got to make sure that he doesn't have outside assistance this time. You've got to change your bike in the pits. If you get a flat, so put an extra three psi in front and rear, you'd be fine. But of course, when he did have outside assistance in 2000, it held him up for about five minutes. I'm surprised he even won it because it was a ride of the night. Yes, no doubt about yeah, it. and uh, Dave Nan just saw him go past him. Like yeah. it was amazing. Well, true. I was happy he didn't pass me. <laughs> and so, and then Tom Ford, he's also renowned yep. on the road. One of the strong boys, yeah. And Justin Nash, he won the Numbat Cup last year. So yep. there's a solid um, starting grid there. And then the women um, is looking good. We've got ten women lining up in the uh, women's elite this year, which is awesome. We've got Andrew Coleman who won it last year and won the women's Numbat Cup plate. Mm-hmm. And uh, Sarah Smith is coming back from injury and from over Victoria. She won it the first year, and she's doing the Dirty Dozen on Sunday, so she's going to be backing up. And you've got my favourite female cyclist in Western Australia, the current under-19 CX Australian champion, Emma Lendrum. Yep. And of course, for those of you who didn't know, and I think we mentioned it on the show when she won it, she actually did the fastest time in the under-23 category last year to win the under-19 category. So. We rave about Emma Lindrum and we look at Tony Lindrum's uh, photos all the time. So looking forward to see how Emma goes against the big kids this week. And the Lindrums are always there first off in the morning helping us set the cross course up. So not only does she race hard, but she helps set up, which is the most important thing in cross. Excellent. Now I'm going to be down there on the microphone giving a bit of a shout, trying to make everyone a little bit more awake on Saturday night. Other things to look forward to uh, this weekend, the, at, down at Collie, we have the Lowry on this weekend. You have to be a very good bike rider to have won the Lowry, trust me. Uh, over 170 riders are lining up on Sunday in all the road races. Just on 100 for the, uh, for the criteriums on Saturday. I spoke to Jamie Mullaney, he's very happy with the numbers for the road race. Would have liked a few more for the criterium, but we do know that there's a lot of bike racing on like the Supercross and of course Busso 70.3 and there's something else. The Wage, the Gravity Enduro out Gravity of um, Enduro is Goat on. Farms. Yeah, so, so lots of stuff on. Hitting the big trails, big, big trails, big hits and big crashes. <laughs> yeah, but the Lowry, if you are not got anything to do, if you're driving back from Busso, drop into Collie and have a look at the finish of the Lowry as well. The other thing to look forward to, Euroboy is not with us obviously. Matt Tognani isn't with us this week, he was a bit busy, he actually works for Italy, not like Husbums. Uh, the Giro d'Italia, Matt Tognini's favourite bike race in the history of the world, starts this weekend and next week Toggles will be here to give us a recap of what's happened so far in the Giro. That's it from me, that's it from Stu, we'll see you at the Supercross Saturday night. A big thank you to Vermark Austro Asia for letting us use their premises this week and we'll see you out on the road.